What's up everybody, my name's Will from Ghost Hack, and today I'm going to give my explanation of FM synthesis, aka frequency modulation. <laughs> Now, many people have done their explanation of FM synthesis in the past, and I feel as though a lot of them are very good, a lot of them are not so good, and I don't know how many of you guys have seen, so I think it would be beneficial for me to kind of give my explanation of FM synthesis and display it as I would, and specifically the FM synthesis used inside of Serum, Citrus, and a lot of other FM plugins. And I'm going to be using Serum for this case just as a display, because Serum is very good, it's very visual, you can see what's going on, It's and I'm going to have an EQ up here as well, so you can get a good view of what's happening when when it is happening, so let's get right into it. So the setup that I have here is I have Serum to my left and then EQ up top, and that's the EQ is gonna kind of display all the frequency action that I'm going to show in Serum. So when we start off, we just have a saw wave. But I'm going to pull up on both of these oscillators just the basic shapes preset so you can see what it's like to do FM. And the first thing I do when I'm FMing is I'm going to turn down one of the oscillators because I'm going to use that as the modulator while the other one is the carrier. And that kind of leads into my first initial explanation of sort of a concept of FM synthesis. FM synthesis involves two oscillators. One oscillator actually outputs sound and it just outputs, you know, whatever shape you have going in here in this case. So it's the thing that actually makes the sound and it's called the carrier. It's the main thing that you hear. And then the other oscillator is called the modulator and its sole purpose is usually not to output any sound at all, but its sole purpose is just to affect the carrier. So we have a carrier oscillator that outputs sound and we have a modulation oscillator that affects the carrier before the sound gets outputted. And that's why I'm going to use this one as the carrier with the level up and this one as the modulator with the level down. And okay, so how exactly does the modulator modulate the carrier, which in this case is just a sine wave. Well, what it does is it modulates the frequency or pitch. So it basically controls movement of the pitch. Right now, when I just hit a note, I have this up four octaves. So we have a nice high sine wave here. And the concept of FM synthesis is that this shape, the frequency of this oscillator here is going to control the movement of this oscillator here. So let's say I take this down a couple octaves. This is a really low sound, like if I were to actually output it. It's extremely low. You can see it's not even in within hearing range, really. It's just super low frequency, which means that it's a sine wave just going very slow. And so if we use that as the modulator, we can say FM from B. So we're using B as the modulator. And now as we turn it up, we get some vibrato. You can hear that the frequency, the pitch of this one is being controlled by this, this shape. Again, if we slow this down even more, bring it down yet another octave, that movement gets even slower because this, uh, because this shape right here is also getting slower itself. We can bring it down even lower. And now you can hear how slow that movement back and forth is and it moves along kind of the shape of the sine wave. But if we speed it up, we actually get a tone because these frequencies are now moving so fast that it's actually changing the shape of this right here. It's no longer just a sine wave. It's actually a big mess of, you know, different sine wave harmonics. But back to the basics here, kind of what I was displaying. with this movement back and forth, you would guess that you can see this shape is moving back and forth in this kind of up and down way, and the pitch right here is moving back and forth in this kind of up and down way. So you would think that the shape of this is controlling the frequency of this. Now in true FM synthesis, that would be true. That is true, the frequency of this one is literally controlling the frequency of that. However, in Serum and other common FM plugins such as Citrus, that actually is not the case. It uses a different kind of modulation that a lot of people just kind of refer to and understand as frequency modulation. It actually uses phase modulation. And I'll explain what this means. Phase modulation is essentially saying the phase of this oscillator is what is controlling the pitch of this oscillator. Not the frequency of this oscillator, but the phase and the best way to describe that might be the direction in which this is moving, like the direction in which the line is moving. As you can see with this kind of curved wave, the direction is constantly changing. 
It's constantly bending and shifting. It never really makes a straight line in one direction. It's constantly moving. Therefore, the pitch of this oscillator will be constantly moving. However, if I were to change a dip to a different shape, maybe uh, maybe this shape, this would be interesting because this is one line that is constantly moving in one direction. That This line has exactly the same phase throughout the entire process. This one doesn't. The phase, the direction in which it's moving, is always changing. Whereas this one has one phase, except for one specific spot at the end and, and the beginning when it bumps back up. There's actually a line that you can't see in this one, but there's actually a line that goes jump that goes right up back to the top because it has to start at the top again. So you have exactly the same phase throughout this entire table except for one little spot here. And when we use that, now we have this. You can hear, first of all, the pitch has changed if we bring the FM down. That was the original pitch, and now we bring it up. The pitch has changed and now it has clicks. The pitch has changed to one singular different pitch because this line is only moving in one singular direction. So it's just going to stay exactly that pitch. And then this oscillator is trying to zip up to there as fast as it can, just zip right back up top so it can restart uh, right on right in phase. It's trying to zip up back and top as fast as it can. And that's what that clicking is. That just brief, just tiny little change in phase in order to get to the top. And perhaps this right here is a better way to look at it. You see there's one straight line and then you have a click, just a click phase. And then it's one straight line headed in the same direction. And then it restarts and then the line itself is still headed in exactly the same direction. It's all due kind of in one way. And then it just zips back and you get that. Now you'll hear that the pitch has changed from the last one because instead of the line going downward now, like right there, like top left to bottom right, it now goes sort of bottom left to top right. It goes up at a different angle. And that's what I mean by phase modulation. Basically, basically the angle in which this line travels determines the pitch. And it gets even more interesting when you have, say, like a square wave right here where you look at the lines. Let's think about how this would sound. Well, it'll start right here and you'll have a little click right? Because you can see it going from zero right here. It's just, it's just popping down. So have a little click at the beginning and then you'll have one singular tone, right? Just flat going completely straight. And then you'll have a click right here where it has to bump up and just slightly change phase to go from vertical, go from horizontal phase to vertical phase to horizontal phase, just as fast as it can. And then you, you know, you're back at exactly the same phase as before. These two top lines are in exactly the same phase. They're just in different spots, Right, so they're all headed the same direction. And then you have another click here. So it's basically twice the number of clicks, but it should be one pitch. So that's how that's controlled. It especially gets interesting when you go into these pulse width modulated things, because essentially what you're controlling is the spaces uh, in between each click. The clicks just come at different times. And you can get into more complex waves and you can kind of already determine what's going to happen. It's like, okay, well, here's a straight line here. It's all headed in one direction. So we know that's going to be a pitch. And then we have a straight line here that's headed in a different direction. So we know that's going to have one pitch, but it's going to be a different pitch. And then we can see where things jump around at the beginning because it has to go from this point here to that point there where things will jump up in the beginning. So we'll have a click there and they'll jump down in this middle. So we'll have a click there. So we'll have two clicks and two notes. And this is how this determined. This is technically called phase modulation. It's what a lot of FM plugins use. So even though it isn't actually true analog FM, it is FM that is sort of commonly accepted amongst a lot of sound designers and producers that use this kind of FM synthesis in plugins like Serum and Citrus. And even in Massive, you have the phase modulation knob. And the phase modu modulation is sent essentially this. It's essentially FM synthesis, except it has a built-in sine wave. So you're constantly phase modulating with a sine wave. And it also has options where you can control the octave of that sine wave in the same way that I'm controlling this octave here. 
So the real beauty of FM synthesis is when you have this oscillator here move the waveform in pitch faster than this thing actually takes to complete a cycle. Because what happens then is you don't just change the pitch of this waveform, you actually change the shape of the waveform. And that's how you got something kind of nasty and bubbly here. And it has a pitch is because this thing is moving this around so fast that it can't even complete a full cycle of the waveform without getting distorted. And actually Serum has a very good way of displaying this as well. If you've ever used uh, the Ben Plus or the Ben Minus, this is essentially a good way to visualize FM synthesis. And this Ben Minus and Ben Plus are essentially uh, FMing it by a sine wave. That's not actually what it's doing, it's just kind of emulating that sound, but this is essentially what's happening when you frequency modulate based on another sine wave, because you see what'll happen is, let's say the pitch is right at zero, and then when this sine wave goes down the modulator, the, the pitch of this, or the speed of it, because the pitch equals speed for these, uh, for these sounds, the speed of it will, it will slow down and it will become lower in pitch right at the bottom of this modulation. And then when it comes up, it will be faster and be higher in pitch. So one part of the waveform is getting faster and one part of the waveform is getting slower. That's how you have the pitch being high and then the pitch being low and it going back and forth. It's just a mixture between faster and slower. And then you obviously, when you control the pitch of this, like the octave, you're controlling the rate at which it's going back and forth in pitch. So essentially, let's look at what happens here. If I add a little bit of Ben Plus, right? What am I doing when I'm doing this? Let's bring it all the way down. Well, I've just made this section really fast before because there was just this one area in here, this little area between these two sections. That took up, up almost half the length of the waveform. Like we look here, the center where these are touching are right here where they're touching the edge where they're reading max like reaching maximum volume is about here and is also about here so this is about uh a quarter of the way in and three quarters of the way in are touching and now i've taken those areas and i've sped those up right so now they're touching really close to each other that area that took up almost half the waveform is now just squished into this small area that maybe takes up like an eighth of the waveform. And now, as we see before, these middle areas that only took about half the waveform are now stretched up to take up most of the waveform. Most of this waveform here has been stretched to take up that. So these areas right here, here and here, are actually moving slower while these are moving faster, right? And it does that in a very smooth way and that emulates frequency modulation. Like now let's listen. Well, I gotta turn it down in pitch first. Now the reason of course that this doesn't sound like FM is because again, in Serum, we're not using true FM, we're using phase modulation. But you can use it to achieve very similar effects. Like let's say uh, Ben Minus is used a lot if you want to make something sound a little, like a little more juicy, a little more wet. Like take for example, this Monster 5 wavetable. <laughs> If you wanted to make this sound a little more wet and less dry. You can make it sound a little more bubbly by doing that. But the same thing can be achieved by FM synthesis. All you have to do is go into FM from B, make sure this modulation oscillator is at most at the same octave, and then we can FM. and it kind of resembles the sort of tone that we could get using Ben plus and minus. So just to recap, true FM would be controlling the pitch or the frequency of the carrier oscillator by the pitch and frequency of the modulation oscillator. which would end up sounding similar to that. But the FM that we use in plugins such as Serum and Citrus is actually phase modulation. And this will sound a little different depending on how straight the lines are and the actual phase that is being outputted by this oscillator. Two different pitches. 
two lines going in different directions. So there we are, that is my explanation of FM synthesis and how a lot of FM synthesis is actually phase modulation in disguise. Now I will say, kind of as I did in the beginning, that there are a lot of videos out there attempting to explain FM synthesis and phase modulation using Serum and other plugins. There are a lot of ways you can attempt to explain it, and I hope that the way I explained it is decently clear and that I was able to show you some good examples of it using Serum and kind of prove my point other than just rattling out some explanation. So if you learned something or you enjoyed this video, leave a like and also make sure if you're not subscribed to go down and click the subscribe button. It's free. You can always unsubscribe later if you want to. But we are uploading multiple music production videos and tutorials every single week. So I really don't think you want to miss out on that. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Happy producing. Oh,